Uh, looks like we're about to have an interesting standoff. He'll be good with me. I got him here. Uh, we're gonna go live here. So you're gonna have to pack up your stuff and leave. Okay. So I imagine we're gonna be going to all 25 camps along here and forcing yeah. everyone out. So where are all the homeless gonna go? You have around 40 people living out here. So what I would suggest you to do if there's 40 of you, you guys all pull your money and go rent a house or something. That's what you need to do. They go down there, sir, and they pick up trash. Now, yeah, you've got drug issues and everything else, but we're helping getting them in the detox. Look, the only way we can help them is to live with them and well, pull them out. I don't That's care the only live, way it works. I don't care where you do that, but you're not going to do it here on this land on the reservation. Can I have one of them? Yes, sir. Here you go. This is just advising of everything that's going on. All right. Here, I'll even give you one. Take this. As of right now, it looks like they have jurisdiction for about uh, maybe 70 yards. So um, 70 yards, we're out of their jurisdiction. Anyways, we have the backup property that we can move to. Um, so as far as we're concerned, Alpha Base is still operating. Um, and we're basically letting them know what we're doing because we're not breaking the law or doing anything illegal. We're helping people and picking up the trash on the land that they're not managing. But we're going to move over a little bit. You can get out here. I'm going to save the battery and we're going to start getting with our teams. And I know some of you, I'm calling you right now, so I'll get to you guys right now. Come on, Solo. Today is the day that uh, they uh, want you to vacate, is that correct? That's right. By midnight tonight, they want us gone. Uh, at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, they're supposed to be run rolling in with bulldozers and everything like that, including law enforcement, anybody left over, including those that aren't on the perimeter, that are off the perimeter, will get arrested or cited. And there's a lot of those that have medical issues to where they can't just gather all their stuff and go. And have nowhere to go and a lot of them plan on taking a stand against law enforcement tomorrow that aren't on you know the VOP base itself okay and they're gonna take us try to take a stand right here then they just don't yeah, want to move those that aren't you know on the base itself or plan on taking a stand okay. wheelchairs and all okay and wheelchairs and all and from what I understand this this wash that you see in the background, people have been living out here for many, many years, right? Uh, there was one person I met that has been out here for 35 years. And he doesn't want to leave, doesn't want housing or anything like that, and he is a veteran. He's just been out here too long, doesn't care about getting housing, he likes being off grid. Okay. So he probably doesn't come up and, and hang out with um, you guys, huh? He'll come up uh, occasionally to get a food bag or sit down at a hot meal. Okay. Okay, cool. Well, you want to show me what's what's left here, I guess, on the last day? So we're, instead of, you know, coming out, getting something to eat, or getting a cup of coffee and going back to their tents and hiding out, or just preparing for the day, they'd come out under the canopy and socialize, talk to each other, and then it led to them hanging out together and just continuing their conversations late into the night. Okay, okay. So this is the canopy, so... For shade. Okay. Uh, we had tents set up here, and you know, we had to take them down uh, due to the effect of the eviction. Uh, we had, a, this morning at 6 a.m., a family of four uh, head down to Tucson because that was where they were headed to anyway, which was thankful and, and good luck for them because that's where they was wanting to go, and we got them there. So they're now at our Bravo base location there in Tucson. A lot of people that are out here, you know, they don't fit into 
society or meet society standards, you know, of being sociable. Uh, through us, you know, they're able to meet people that are just like them and get back into the social environment, which will make them more socially uh, comfortable. But most people, you know, have a different perspective on those that are homeless, thinking that all of them are druggies or all of them are, you know, prostituting themselves out on the street corner for whatever reason. And it's not true. You know, a lot of it's hard luck. Yes, some of it's drug use. But a lot of it's hard luck and loss of hope or being rejected by society because of a military background or growing up in a certain area. And it takes its toll on the mentality of the people. Yeah, I, I understand that. Do you have a military background? I yes. see. Or the I was uh, served three years in the United States Army. Uh, I was a field artilleryman shooting cannons, and I was uh, stationed at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. They called me Yashua. Yashua? Uh, um, how would I spell that if I was? Y O S H U A. How How long have you been out here at Alpha Base? I've been here uh, about a month. And one or two weeks, or two months, excuse me. Two months, and... Two months. Okay. And I've been doing all that I can. And uh, since they had to move to Phoenix, had to move peace today, due they had the private property that they're being run off of now, I chose to to make my move to uh, Usury Pass to the National Forest down to a national forest. Okay. Where I would have to move every 14 days a mile. Okay, so you are uh, you can camp there, but you have to, you can't stay in the same spot. Okay. Every 14 days you Two weeks. a mile. Two weeks. Okay. I know this because I'm rainbow family. <laughs> okay, okay. And there is a... How much there's... does that cost you every two weeks? It's free. Okay. Because it's the national forest. When you when you're able to sleep in groups, you, you feel a lot sleep safer at night. I do. Okay. I once had a camp over on the Mesa Gilbert Center tribe order on on the little railroad for for the lumber company back there. Fifteen people called me uh, the head of the camp. I oversaw everybody going out to work every morning. I cooked the meals, me and my second wife, and just made sure everybody knew that uh, when they came back to camp, they had to pitch in for either one way groceries, one way, doesn't matter how you do it. Some people dumpster dove. Some people worked, but everybody pitched in for the food. Of course, there were churches and uh, personal people who would come and make donations. There were two, uh, two apartment complexes on the dead end street that we were on. The children kept coming to visit us. I made sure they had their parents come and visit us before they were allowed to stay any length of time. So that the parents knew what was going on. And we all, 15 of us, met with the parents to let them know that we would respect their children and not use any drugs or alcohol when they were present. Yeah, well, that's very commendable. Well, it started, the children kept wanting to bring us donations. And I explained to them that we can't accept it from children, but if you ask your parents and bring your parents to tell us that you can give us this, then we can accept it. So since you've been out here uh, at VOP, where, where did you come from? Like, where were you living prior to getting on base? Anywhere I could find that the Mesa police wouldn't terrorize me, literally. Okay, okay. Going to jail for um, criminal trespassing when I was suffering from a medical problem. Last year I came down with uh, pigeon mites at the beginning of the year. I didn't know what they were. I didn't even know they were a parasite. 
that has a symbiotic relationship with pigeons. Okay. And they got it in my system. They, uh, like a beaver damming up a stream, they got into my uh, kidneys, you know, tract and bladder. And so you couldn't get rid of all the by impurities. March, huh? By March, I was wearing a catheter. By May 22nd, I was in the hospital with total renal failure. Renal failure, that is. I was dying. Wow. A literal walking dead man or a zombie. And the hospital was able to help you out? Um, well, from the beginning of the year on, the doctors at Desert Better in Mesa denied the existence of those parasites. And it just got worse, huh? Okay, they didn't know what was going on. And they wouldn't keep me at the hospital. Well, what can you tell me about uh, life on uh, the VOP Alpha? Life here has been great. It's, you know, I'm, I'm the, like I said, I helped out every way I could. Uh, I commandeered a walker where I could. How do you commandeer a walker? Did you <laughs> steal it from an old person that can't to defend themselves? Yeah, there, there was there was a walker that had been donated. So oh, you commandeered it for personal reasons. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought you were you could go into the grocery store and take it up from old ladies. I, used it, I, I could actually do a little more with Walker than I could with, with my cane. Okay, well that makes a lot of sense. Move a little quicker. I could carry uh, one or two more items. Four wheel drive is uh, much better than the yeah. than the one wheel. So for today, that became my overload wheels on my bicycle trailer. Okay. Okay. It's because my bicycle trailer is a full suspension trailer for a bicycle. The, the springs on it squatted down to put the front wheels of the walker, which I six point tied to the back of the trailer. You mentioned when you came here, um, one of the requirements is, you know, you, you, you shouldn't bring drugs in here. Right. You said you... And I didn't. I was about uh, two weeks clean okay. at that time. When when you was stepped well, on base, I'm here, yeah. Okay, and then um, you said that uh, you were clean off of methamphetamine for how long in total now? Uh, over sixty days now. I lost I lost count after fifty. Congratulations! So, so all I can do is guess. Yeah. And my birthday coming up April sixth. Um, I'm I'm doing great. Good to hear, good to hear. I'm living life a lot more than I did when I was um, when I started doing the math. Do you think sometimes the war on drugs is a lot harsher than the drugs yes. themselves? Well, let me just say this. God gave us the marijuana. It says so in Genesis chapter 1, verse 29. That's Genesis, the first book of the Bible, 1, 29. Well, it always boggled my mind how they I'll had to... I'll let your, your viewers read that for themselves. Well, I, I know Genesis does say every every plant and herb and seed to be used. It just... Every, every it, plant that bears fruit or seed in the life of itself. Yeah, it just boggles my mind like when they uh, made alcohol illegal. They had to... Uh, make an amendment to the Constitution to, to take away what that right. And me, then they also had to amend it to bring it back. What gets me is that God gave it to us, but the government wants to tell us what we can put in our God-given bodies. Well, there's a lot of stuff that's harmful. You, I mean, you've had some experience that, but, do, but does the government, does the government telling you and, and throwing you in jail and doing all this stuff I have been help? In prison twice, starting at 50 years old. Was it on drug charges? Marijuana, because I had the weight of a grain of rice hanging around my neck in a, uh, one of those anodized aluminum pill containers. So how long did they lock you up then? A year and a day. Oh. And they probably charge you a bunch of money too. 
Oh, they tried. They took away my food stamp privileges. Oh. Turning me in, now turning me into a beggar of the streets. I mean, I didn't mind living on the streets when I could buy groceries for myself. But it's turned me into a beggar, literally. And, and were you on other drugs at the time or just marijuana when that happened? Uh, I had occasionally used other drugs, but I was tempted to stay just with the marijuana. But when when they, they, they threw me in prison over it, I kind of lost control. And I went to all out use. And like I said, it hurt me. Jimbo, wherever you are, I'm doing this for you, brother. He was a Navy SEAL. And like I said, around 07, 08, he passed away from stomach cancer. And I respected him so much for being the big brother I never had. But I had to do this for him. And when you say do this, what, what specifically? To, to be a volunteer for the real team. Okay. And it sounds like you, you've really benefited through helping others with what you can do. And they helped me by letting me help them. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth? Let's hope. Let's hope we can. Let's hope the the VOP finds a way to work this out in the Mesa area, so that way you can keep that community and keep helping people that are in even worse situations. I feel I'm getting a little too old to be coming up on my 53rd birthday here. 53rd. Yeah. 42. And I'm getting a little weary of the streets these days, but I will continue to do whatever I can with the real people. Well, I'm glad it's made such a, a a powerful, positive impact on you. What What do you think sums it up? Why? How it's How it's accomplished such a a positive change in your life? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, it, it's just so recent, but it feels great. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you for keeping it real, you know. There's so much going on, and we try to help them all as best we can. And I don't know what they're going to do without us being here, without having a steady supply of food and water, where the nearest place for them to get food and water is three miles away.